I want to compare the voltage between a 12 gauge 50 foot cable and a 10 gauge 50 foot cable. Let's get into it. I'm Ive, I like to keep solar simple, but enough of that. Let's talk about what we need to perform this test. I have the Ocatel P2001 and I have the Ace Fold, whatever its model number is, but they're pretty much the same device. They both have all powers MC4 to Anderson connectors going into them. Uh, let's look at some uh, joints here. We got 140 watts coming in here. We have 135 coming in there. Shout out to the good brother Jason Noy. He told me about using parallel cables in order to, we'll talk about that later, but parallel cables will allow me to keep these lines open by having one cable into them. So I have two sets of those. I'll show you that later. I have my Kershaw, which is used for dealing with these stubborn MC4 connectors. And I have my Renergy MC4 tool, which is also used for that. So tools of the trade right there. Let's talk about the panels. We have two arrays here. These two are in series, those two are in series. These two are HQST 190s. This is an HQST 190, and this is a uh, Bougier V180. But you saw the watt output on the panels, on the devices. So it's pretty much a very similar thing we got going on here. So we'll, we'll make it work. And then these are my 50 foot 10 gauge cables. And I'm gonna steal a cable from one of these to, cause these are both 12 gauge to compare. So let's get into it. Actually, first let's level set. I'm gonna put those parallel cables in and let's see what kind of voltage we're getting right now. So if you look here, I have the parallel cable plugged into this one. This is a male. This one is the female is plugged into a male. You can see that is the same situation here. Male, female, they kind of work the same way. And then I just plug these two into their respective. Boom, boom, back. And then I have these lines open. Let's test open circuit voltage and then test voltage on the load just uh you know what i mean all right we gotta turn our voltmeter on to volts and then switch it to dc and in this situation it doesn't really matter which side you put them in it'll just show different plus or minus on one versus the other we got 48 volts 47.32 all right, this is the one with the parallel cables on it. Now let's test the one without the parallel cables on it. All right, let's turn the light on. That one is 47.50, 47.49, so 47 volts. All right, cool. So now that we have level set, we need to pull a 12 gauge cable off of a power station. I don't know which one I'm gonna do. I guess I'll disconnect the EB120, that is that array right there, which is in series going into the EB120, the three panels. All right, we good money. You can see this thinner cable, thinner, much thinner cable compared to this much thicker cable. I mean, not much, but 10 gauge, 10 gauge dip, 12 gauge dip. So let's look at some voltages. Now, interestingly enough, I'm seeing a discrepancy here this one is at 139 it's floating around this one is at 130 floating around a little bit this is the 12 gauge cable and that's the 10 gauge cable 10 gauge 12 gauge i didn't expect this one to be pulling more but this one has the two 190s that one has a 190 and a 180 with very similar voltages this is such a cool little hack that jason noy told me about my voltmeter is already on deck and we're going to here and we're going to here. Now this is with a load on it. I'm getting 39 volts. It's at 38, it's kind of fluctuating all over the place. 38.7, 38.6, 39 volts. Okay, let's hop over to the other one. So it's a little trickier cause it's tighter. Now it said 40, okay, 40 volts. So it lost, let's just say it lost one volt or two volts <laughs> two volts times whatever amps coming in let's just find it out and then we'll draw our conclusion so now what i'm going to do is going to change this dip over to amps 
change it to DC and then I'm going to zero it out and then we'll just clamp let's just clamp right here so it's uh, 40 volts at 3.34 amps whatever that is I'll put it up on the screen and then we come over here let's do the same thing let's get all the way up here even though it shouldn't matter we got 38 volts at 3.5 amps it's upside down for y'all but I'll put the math up on the screen now let's do a quick comparison of the actual watts that we're getting in this one is getting 143 142 and that one's still getting 10 less watts 133 Let's go take a look at the panels because these uh, watts were pretty similar before. They both have no shade on them and they look good. I mean, you know, that one got a leaf on it. Let's pull the leaf off. Twelve gauge, ten gauge. All right, let's go check it again. Maybe that has something to do with it. Let's look at watts. One forty-two, and this one, interesting jumped up to 138 for 132 so it went from a difference of 10 watts to redeeming itself a lot more it's a lot closer now let's draw some conclusions here you think about this those panels are in series series combines the volts that had no parallel connections which is why the amps are at like about three some odd amps the amps should be higher, but they're not angled towards the sun. Your amps increase as the sun power intensifies. The gauge of the cable is important for the amps coming through the, the line. And at some point, the amps coming through the line at longer distances starts to matter. But I remember Jason always saying like uh, around 40 uh, feet, you kind of don't have to worry about that. So because I'm not putting an excess amount of amps through these panels, which I would never do, we talked about this on a live stream, even if you combine these two panels together in parallel at 10 amps a piece, that would be something to consider. But for most of you guys who have 100 watt panels combining amps, you could probably put like about three panels in parallel, really two, um, and not have any problems with either of these cables. I made the mistake of going 10 gauge for everything because I wanted to future proof myself, but that's because I didn't understand how much these cables were rated for for amps. Armand Allen mentioned to me that you should only run these cables at about 80% of their rating. Uh, I'll put up a little infographic from an HQST MC4 cable <laughs> that has what the cables are rated at. So about 80% of whatever you see on the screen. So I think that this, with these current arrays, just series, no parallel the amount of amps coming through this line is minimal even if it was high higher five seven amps you still wouldn't have a problem i don't see a discernible difference between the 12 gauge cable and the 10 gauge cable so I, you know i bought all these 10 gauge cables for nothing but it's all good now i do have a video coming up where i'm gonna put all four of these panels in series to go into my new ac 200p uh, me and the good brother Jason Noy came to an agreement, so shout out to him. So I was able to get that dip from him. And it's all love over here as far as being able to use these panels. So if that video is done, it'll be up here. If that video is not done, then check this video out. This is a cool one, right? Right. Yeah, go ahead and play it.